All right, so the plan for today is uh, we're just gonna be chilling, honestly. I don't really wanna play Genshin today. The plan is just gonna be to have like a game mechanic AMA. If you got things that you don't understand, if you wanna know about cool things that you can do in the game, you like one unit and you wanna know what's the best way to make them work or what's a cool thing about them, still have a special place in Ask my away. heart. Ask away. give her the four months of Prime Aftermath Bar. You are now officially my new favorite viewer. And I want you to know I don't say that. What do I think of the new Abyss? I like it a lot. Obviously, it's still Genshin. So there's still issues with it, but it's a step in the right direction. PMA has some really cringe attack patterns, but at the end of the day, it's just... It's not that bad. I like lectures. I've always liked... Not always. It took me a little while to get to warm up to them, but I've liked lectures and heralds for a while. I stand by that. These are completely fine enemies to fight. This is honestly, like, it's a good boss design. He's just a little bit too tanky for my taste, but that is what it is. The Abyss Heralds, I really like. This this fight is really fun if you don't get bad RNG. If you do get bad RNG, it's a little bit more annoying, but it doesn't completely fuck you over. It just makes you lose a little bit of time, so it's not that bad. And it's just, it's it's a really fun fight overall, right? Like, Rune Guards and Rune Graders are just fun enemies to fight. They feel satisfying. And then Kenki's Kenki. I don't like Kenki. I've never liked Kenki. Fuck Kenki. I think it's the only real bad fight in the whole abyss. When it didn't change the, the ley line is good. It was supposed to be 50% from beta. Yeah, the main problem with this ley line is if it's 50%, you'd make Raiden useless, basically. Because, like, every team can fit in normal or charge attacks, right? But when your normal attacks don't count as ca normal attack damage, that sucks. So it just ends up being, like, a pretty fucking massive Raiden nerf if the ley line is too impactful. Is there a scenario in which Kea Chongyun is better than Kea Rosaria? That's a good question, honestly. I don't think so, other than like, you're an early game-ish player and you only have one good set of artifacts. Because your, your Chongyun is basically going to make your Kea's damage a bit higher, but his damage is not going to be nearly as high as, as Rosaria's damage would be. What do I think is a good crit ratio for Freeze Ganyu? I don't know. A lot. <laughs> what is the element you want to swirl in Sunfire? Yes. The element you want to swirl in Sunfire is yes. You want to swirl all three. And it's actually pretty important that you swirl all three because you do pyro damage, you do electro damage, and you do hydro damage, right? Like this is done to swirl uh, both hydro and electro, and then this is done to swirl pyro. And once you've done that, you've applied the VV to all three. And you're fucking vibing. How much swirls is Sunfire over team? Uh, because if you're replacing Cho with Fischl slash Lisa, quite a bit, honestly. You're losing out on Ching Cho's fucking massive damage and on the vape from Swirls. Bro, does she not have Fav? No. Oh, she doesn't have Fav. Never mind. I was like, I feel like, I feel like I'm not getting enough particles. That would explain why I felt like I wasn't getting enough particles, huh? Definitely would. Definitely would. <laughs> I was like, did I miss a skill? Like, what What happened? Oh, fuck off. I missed my fucking burst. No, I didn't miss it. I just didn't crit. There we go. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I do not have enough ER. What happened there? What the heck happened there? I don't know. Yikes. Oh, 
That was not a very good fucking run, but whatever. Oh, am I? Am I? I'm not doing it again. Whatever. Hopefully you get the idea. <laughs> uh, in a perfect world, you swirl all three. It can be difficult to swirl all three because your electro and hydro uptime is a little bit jank, but... <sighs> Monka. Dude. This, this cup gets stuck so often. It got stuck yesterday, it got stuck today again. It's like... I'm not gonna say it, but you guys know what I'm thinking. I'm gonna say it, it's funny. It's, it's a step cup. <laughs> Do you guys have any other questions? Would I recommend pulling Shanhe or Ganyu for Ayaka Freeze? No, really, you, you don't, definitely don't really need to pull either. Thoughts on C6 Sarah over Fischl and Raiden Hyper? I don't like it. Sarah can suck my dick. I think I think Sarah's fine when you have C6. I, I'm sure the, the team can actually deal more damage, but I just don't like it. Is it better to low to high plunge or low plunge against two Ruin Guards? Chow, um, you can get collision with high plunge. You can get collision with low plunge as well. You should do low plunges because they're faster. Man, it's like if you if you if you have a spoon, right, and you're attacking someone at a pretty fast pace, right? Well, if you make each of those hit deal X amount more damage, if that X is big, that's pretty significant. Whereas, if you get yourself- oh, I fucking- I don't have the vacuum cleaner. HERE'S A VACUUM CLEANER! L let's assume this is full of water, right? And it's like actually heavy. Like, it's gonna be a lot slower. And if each hit is getting increased by the same X amount, right? You'd rather have the one that's hitting faster, assuming they're getting increased by the same amount, because you're getting that increase more often. That's what's happening with collision plunges on Chao. If you do high plunge or jet combo, right, what you're using is you're, you're doing a slow attack and adding that collision plunge, you're only getting a collision plunge like in, a, in over your burst period, like you're getting, I don't know, fucking seven, eight. I don't, I don't count plunges on Chao. I think I use my brain when I play Chao, fuck that. Whereas if you do low plunge spam, you're, pro you're gonna get like 11, 12, 13 of them, right? And you're gonna end up gaining more motion value and, be and usually low plunge spam is slightly worse, but it's not by a significant amount and because it gains so much more from the collision plunge, it ends up being better. That being said, if you don't have a shielder against two ruin guards, you cannot just mindlessly spam plunges you have to do a, con a, a mix of low plunges high plunges and and jet combos to dodge their attacks basically or else you'll have to use dashes which decrease your dps which isn't what you want who destroys pyrolector shields faster mona or barbara it should be mona mona should be pretty good at it if you're weaving in dashes should be able to do like dash and 4c and 4CD is probably the highest efficiency because you're getting 4 procs per N4 CD. Am I a fan of 4TOM on Mona for Morgana? No. It's probably good if you go for the Rosaria version. But if you go Diona version, I like putting Diona on TOM because you all basically always do Diona E into Ganyu Q. And Ganyu Q is most of your damage anyways. You don't need to have high uptime. You can just snapshot the buff. Tears for Pyrolector Shield Breakers. The worst is probably Barbara. Kokomi is pretty good. Mona's pretty good. Sincho is pretty good. Child is really good, right? I mean, Sincho and Kokomi have the advantage of like being useful off field as well. Barbara N1C, fuck no. Bro, you'll be out of stamina and the shield is gonna only have lost like 10%. <laughs> Animal MC Hydro Swirled. That doesn't work though, right? You're always gonna Pyro Swirl. Like you're always gonna Pyro Infuse. Cleared with N1C, you're a psychopath. Yeah, sure, it's efficient until you run out of stamina after four and a half charge attacks, and then what? <laughs> and next to it to apply Hydro and N1C. It appears I have to actually showcase this, but I will tell you what happens when you N1C on Barbara. I'm out of stamina. Oh, I cannot do C's anymore. And now I'm dead. 
Like, you're, you're missing the point. You are missing the point. Completely missing the point. Is it intentional? The guy is dead by now? No, it's not. That's just not how that works. Where do you get the majority of your mystic enhancement ores? Is it forging? No. Commissions plus quests plus event shops. I haven't forged anything in so long. <laughs> Cleared Abyss with Ayaka, Diona, Kazuha, Cha. Wonder if this is an actually viable team. It's fine. It's obviously worse than using some something other than Child on the last slot, but because this Child is so good against this guy, it's like kind of fine still, even if it's not optimal. Ayaka is strong enough to carry against Kenki, so... How do you play Raiden without Changling nor Jean? If you don't have Changling or Jean, generally want Kazuha. If you don't have either of the three, you're gonna probably struggle, and I generally wouldn't recommend Raiden. But if you want to force it anyway, as you can probably do something like this, or like this, fine. In what situations would I play Sunfire Jean over Raiden National against enemies that don't move too much? How to clear Thunder Manifestation? Honestly. It, it's a sh it's a shitty enemy. Power units have a pretty good matchup because you get a lot of overloads and overload has a really nice base damage and because you can't freeze, you can't melt, you can't vape and superconduct does dog shit damage and swirl is actually not gonna deal damage to the, to the thunder manifestation because it's like it's electro so it can't take, gets immune to electro. So basically every element other than pyro kind of gets fucked over. So pyro ends up being like the, the default. That being said, geo is probably generally better, right? Because pyro is balanced around their ability to vaporize and them not having access to vaporize hurts their like damage output. Whereas geo is not balanced around reactions at all. Chao isn't balanced around reactions at all either. I guess physical units as well. But yeah, if you're struggling, get yourself a Xiangling. Can I show us how to double swirl with Sucrose and International? Sure. It's the same start as the Kazuha rotation. It's a uh, Child E into Bennett burst. But then instead of swapping to Kazuha, you swap to Xiangling, you drop Guoba. And then you go to Sucrose, you do N1 before Guoba uh, attacks. It's gonna swirl Hydro. And then you do E after Guoba attacks, which is gonna swirl Pyro. Let's show it again. This, 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 this. And we got our setup. For early game, would it be good to aim for crit artifacts slash sub stats already or aim for attack percent first, attack percent first? Crit takes a while to get going. You need to have like around 150, 160 crit value. Crit to actually become a good stat. Right? When you have 5% crit rate, getting some crit damage doesn't do shit, right? When you have 50% crit damage, getting some crit rate doesn't do that much either. No, no, never understood why you charge attack on child even with thrust. Basically, it's just because the charge attack motion value is like very high. Charge attack damage at Talon of Lane, right? The motion value is uh, 226%, which is like about as much as the first three hits, but it comes out way faster. But then on top of that, you can cancel it really early. It also has a huge AoE, yeah it does. Its biggest issue is that it taggers a lot and it ends up knocking back uh, smaller enemies pretty often. So when you're against enemies that can be knocked back, you'll often find yourself wanting to do normal attack spam, even if it's a little bit less damage, just so that you don't fuck up your grouping. Which is one of the things that makes uh, Verdescent Hunt such a good weapon. Usually your charge attack would knock them back, but then the Verdescent brings them back in, which doesn't fuck your grouping. Plus it does fall damage, which is really useful. Which combo is better on Raiden ult? If I remember correctly, it's uh, N3C times 3 plus N1C. What I usually do is N3C times 2 and then N2C and then N1C. Because I don't trust myself to get the fucking last charge attack out. And so I end up like ditching one of my third normal attacks to give myself a little bit more time and burst. Because it's it's a pretty tight window to actually get it. And if you, if you miss the last charge attack, you're just like, oh, well that sucks. <laughs> For Chi Chi Taser, what main stats should you get on 4 Clam while using Fav Sword? I don't remember. <laughs> I made calcs on that. I don't remember them. I'm sorry. I don't really give a shit about Chi Chi. <laughs> Do I have the calcs explaining why attack circlet is better than crit damage circlet on Ayaka? I mean, it's not always better, but... Main reason why crit is generally better than, than attack is because crit doesn't really have diminishing returns, right? When you have your crit value at... I don't know, let's see, sorry, 120... You gain one substat rolls worth. The crit multiplier is gonna be what the fuck? It's gonna be equal to this squared divided by eight plus one. 
increase from one substat. All right, as you can see, it doesn't go down, it actually goes up, right? And then it caps out at around uh, 280, and then it goes back down. But like, even when it goes back down, it doesn't really reach that much, right? When you have attack, let's say you have a thousand base attack, your total attack is gonna be a thousand multiplied by one plus your attack percent, let's say like 66.6%, .6%, plus your flat attack, let's say 350, all right? Well, this plus one substat roll of attack percent, Right, it's very cool. All right, and then the increase here, it starts good, but the more you have, the lower it goes, and it just goes down and down and down. And because of that, you don't want to stack attack percent. You just want to have enough. But what happens with Blizzard's Trayer is you start with 100% crit rate almost, basically, right? <laughs> not, not quite, but like you, you reach 100% a lot more easily, which means that what you actually end up looking at is your crit damage, right? And your crit multiplier, let's say you have 100% crit damage with 100% crit rate, your crit multiplier is just gonna be one plus your crit damage, right? And this time, it follows a similar curve to the top. Because you don't have your, your crit rate going up alongside your crit damage anymore, the crit damage just becomes a stat like another, like attack percent that will reach diminishing returns. And because of that, you don't want to just stack crit damage. You want to stack a healthy balance of crit damage and attack percent. Because if you just stack crit damage, right, right here, one, st one sub stats worth of crit damage is going to give you 1.6 damage increase, 1.6% damage increase. But if you don't have any attack percent, you could instead have like 2.5% damage increase from an attack sub stat. Because like crit damage, once you have 100% crit rate, is basically just another form of multiplicative damage percent. And so just like damage percent, just like attack percent, it's gonna have diminishing returns. So what ends up happening is with a weapon like Mist Splitter that has a really high base attack, which is good for attack percent, right? Because if you have a hundred base attack and you have a feather which gives you 311 flat attack, start with zero percent and then you go five percent. All right, your total attacks gonna be this times one plus this plus this, right? Your actual damage increase is gonna be really small, right? But if you have a significantly higher base attack, your damage increase becomes a lot bigger. Because basically what this is, what this flat attack is, is basically just attack percent. 311 flat attack when you have a thousand base attack is just like 31.1% attack percent. And what you can do is you can convert this flat attack to attack percent and then look at how, how much diminishing returns you have. If you have a lower base attack, if you have a hundred instead, it's not 31.1 anymore, it's 311. So that basically translates to you having reached into harsher diminishing returns on your attack percent. So high base attack weapons generally favor attack percent substat a tiny bit more, right? Obviously it's not as big of a, of a difference as this, right? This is a thousand versus a hundred, but I, I hope it illustrates the point well enough. And so Mist Litter has very high base attack, which is what you want. And then on top of that, it has crit damage substat, which because you're basically aiming for 100% crit rate anyways, means that you'll reach diminishing returns on your crit damage a lot faster. So what this means is Miss Flitter is basically the perfect storm of making attack percent better. So it doesn't give you any attack, like any flat or percent attack. It has a really high base attack, which favors attack percent, and it has some crit damage, which nerfs additional crit damage after that. Blacklift is a little similar in that aspect, because it has uh, the highest base attack you can have on a on a four star, other than like the fucking alley flash bullshit, and it has a crit substat as well. But unlike the mist splitter, it gives you attack percent, so it also, if you have stacks, makes the attack percent a little bit worse as well. If you end up going for something like Amenoma, on the other hand, it's a low base attack weapon with attack percent substat that doesn't have any crit on it. So that's three things that make attack percent worse compared to, well, two things. So generally on Aminoma, you don't want to end up with, with attack percent circlet, but if your substats are good enough, it's it could still definitely be your best available artifact. Let's like, let, let's look at a realistic Ayaka ratio. She's got like a thousand-ish base attack. Let's say 46.6%, that's like 20% from subs. You can go 30% from subs. Flat attack, 350, we got two rolls of flat attack on top of the feather. And then crit value, so she starts at 98.4. 
74 from a mist splitter. What am I doing? That's not how this works. It's 44.2. Plus, let's say like 180 from decent artifacts. Supplier is equal to this. Yeah. Squared divided by 8 plus 1. I totally thought. This times 1 plus this plus this. Elemental damage bonus. Don't need to don't need to calculate damage bonus. It's gonna be the same across. Total attack multiplied by a crit multiplier. All right, so this is like with a crit circlet. Let's look at what happens if we ch if we were to change to an attack circlet, right? We gain forty six point six percent. We lose sixty two point two percent. All right, so as you can see, it's slightly worse. It's only worse by like two percent. Let's see what happens if we add one rolls worth of crit damage. Ah, it's the basically the same. 0.2% better, basically the same. So if your attack circlet has like one more good good substat, then it's basically as good. And if it has two more, then it's better. What is CM? It's crit multiplier. So your crit value is like the amount of investment you have into crit, which is two times crit rate plus your crit damage, which means if you're split one to two, half your investment goes into crit damage, half your investment goes into crit rate. So half of that crit value is gonna be on crit damage, half of it is gonna be on crit rate. And then for the crit rate, you divide it by two because it converts one to two, right? If you have like 200 crit value, right? That means that when you're at a one to two ratio, you have a 50% crit rate and 100% crit damage, right? So if your crit value is 200, your crit rate is 50, your crit damage is 100, right? So that's 1 to 2, and it gives you 200. CM is crit multiplier, so it's 50% of the time you crit, 50% of the time you don't crit. When you crit, you gain the crit damage, and when you don't crit, you gain nothing. 50% of the time, you gain the crit damage, and 1 minus 50% of the time, you do normal damage. That's your multiplier from crit. You can simplify this to just this times this plus one, it's the same thing. 